my, oh my goodness. There's something very special about this shot. There it is. Uh, 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 oh, hold up. They're not filming in black and white. <laughs> They're not, <laughs> but it's not in black and white. <laughs> Let's do a slate like this. Welcome to VFX Artists React to Bad and Great CGI, where we applaud the genius of good effects and blame the producers for all the bad effects. <laughs> <laughs> Wolverine. Oh, this is Wolverine. There will be blood. The, Ooh, the this first is, Avenger. This is a combination of rushed and bad ideas all in one. What, why are there sparks? He barely touched it. It's like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> you, you, you all right in there? Flush, flush. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Mm, these are some straight up iPhone compositing. Yeah. Like, get an iPhone app to put claws in your hands. First off, that the tracking on his right hand, ever so slightly, jiggles. It's hard to see frame by frame. But in motion, it just doesn't quite feel attached. But even more so, there's no freaking shadow on his knuckles. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's no shadow. <laughs> like on the you knuckles. got these just like the CG models sticking out of his hand. They don't even have proper motion blur highlights in this either. Like notice when the motion blur is on the bright parts of the blade, the bright part gets dimmer, whereas that bright part should be bright enough because it's reflective metal that it stays bright. Imagine my flashlight is a bright part of a blade. If I go like this, it doesn't turn gray. It stays white. I bet they probably didn't have a proper HDRI for the scene. Basically capturing the proper lighting of the scene, but also recreating the materials in a very scientifically accurate way. They probably just kind of winged it. Maybe they were running out of time and they had to do the scene really quickly. The biggest question is, why aren't they practical? Th that's exactly <laughs> it. They have a special uh, type of blade holder that's it's like, you literally just hold your fist and the blades like conform perfectly around your knuckle and it looks real. No, that's a great point. Do it practical when you can. Dude, this scene? Sweet. Oh, are you serious? No! No! <laughs> the guy's that watching so all calm. this happen. He's so calm. You're... Oh, what? It floated for a second. Yeah, it was kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> the animated position and scale. You know, it's just like rough. a stock image of a helicopter that they they made grow larger. Do you recognize those mountains in the background at all? They filmed lots of scenes here, including scenes from like Chronicles of Narnia. Famously, Lord of the Rings, they filmed a lot of stuff in that area, and that specific valley is where Isengard is located. Oh yeah, <laughs> speaking of which, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, we've seen your comments. It's been very highly content about. Contented. Contented. So we're definitely gonna be doing an episode comparing the two very shortly. And if you'd like to see other movies, TV shows, anything at all for us to react to, please leave a comment below. We read them all. My name is Charles Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with his eyes? He looks fine. Not his eyes. <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart's eyes. Just Mr. Clean. I think it's just an example of like, they're probably just going in and taking out all the wrinkles and doing some patchwork on his face, but in doing so, they're not staying quite entirely true to the lighting on his face and where the shadows would be and where the wrinkles would be. There this is, shot is whoa, whoa, so whoa, 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 bad. Whoa, 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 Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, is this is not even Oh my goodness. I didn't know they continued it. There's oh, no shadows. Oh, there's no that shadows. On <laughs> stock background plate. There's, foot, there's footprints. They're leaving footprints when they run. Why are they leaving footprints and not even having a shadow? And like at least a fuzzy, soft, dark mat underneath their feet would oh. help. This movie had the same budget as Transformers. And this is the quality of the VFX in this movie. Like this is the, like, the last stage of artists just eyeballing it and being like, I guess the background would probably be this bright. Let's bump it up. Versus like, hey, I went out there and got like light meter readings and I took my photo samples and I used my HDRI and I have a scientifically accurate measured moment for what that should look like. Transformers look so good yeah. because that's what they did for all the Transformers. Everything was physically accurate, measured with HDRIs, proper surface simulations. Like, mm, that looks good. Well, that's, that's a real, real truck. That's a real, real truck. Michael Bay does what I think is the perfect approach for CG, which is blending practical and visual effects together in one shot. They're like, that truck is real. Just kidding. The truck is not real. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> it looks so it looks good. so good. Dude. Mm. Oh, this bus shot. Something special about this bus God. shot. That bus is real. That explosion is real. That bus, they already had it chopped in half. And they tear it apart in the middle of the scene. That's all real. Dude. The only thing <sighs> fake is the robot going through it. Oh wow, they have wires. So ballsy. They have wires on the edges of the bus pulling it apart. Yeah. It looks so good. It this is movie is 12 years old, by the way. Something that's helping Michael Bay, yeah. he's putting the camera in a realistic place. It's very grounded. You're in a car, you're in a chase cam, you know? Yeah. You're seeing it from these angles. 
That's so cool. And the huge challenge with that though is you are literally filming something that's not there. So you have to have what we call our CG goggles. You have to have your CG goggles on. You have to be imagining that robot coming through. When Optimus gets tackled there, right here, it's like slightly out of frame. It feels flawed in a real way. I don't think people give Michael Bay enough credit for his filmmaking skills. Absolutely not. Oh my god, dude! Oh my god. This is brutal, man. Dude, the fur looks so good. That oh wet, god. matted fur. Dude, right here, where like, he kind of picks him up and like bites and moves him, that looks really good. Oh, it's like, get in the frame! I need to see your reaction! <laughs> <laughs> also, it hasn't cut yet, by the way. Oh, oh dude, wow. the, the, the fogging of the lens? Wow. Ooh. Do you think that was real fog? No, that can't be, because well, the beer wasn't real, duh. <laughs> <laughs> what an effective, <laughs> what okay? an effect, what, okay? an <laughs> <laughs> what an effective scene though, man. What sells this shot is the fact that Leo is actually being moved around physically yes. in yeah. real life. Hey, wasn't there a guy in place of the bear? So. Dude, I mean, Arthur worked on this movie. That's true. What, yeah. Call Arthur, call Arthur, Dude, right now, ring. do it. I'll, do, I'll call Arthur real quick. All right, how's it going? It's good, it's good. Hey, so we're here watching the bear scene from The Revenant and we're wondering, did they have like a dude that was pulling Leonardo DiCaprio around or was like he on wires or like, how, how did they do it? Yes, so he had a guy in like a, a blue suit with bear arms that was kind of one part of it, just kind of being the inspiration for the movements. He had bear arms? Yeah. What? <laughs> that was the <laughs> And then Leo was in a harness that was a uh, pretty complicated wire contraption to several different trees so that the wires would pull him in different directions. One of the things is that was really critical was rehearsal because we had to know what the quote unquote fight choreography was between the bear and Leo so that the guy in the suit and Leo being pulled cannot all kind of be in sync so that when they did put in a bear, it would line up. So are there some hidden cuts in this like long take? Tons of hidden cuts. Wow. Tons of wow. blends, merges. Thanks for the, uh, the info, man. We're trying to figure out how they did it. Yeah, of course, of course. A match cut is basically when you have a cut from one piece of footage to another, but an element in the footage is basically in the same spot. Like, so, like in 2001, the bone turns into a spaceship. But match cuts can also be a visual effects technique, or basically a magic trick, where you know, you're doing basically like a whip pan, and right in the middle of that whip, and you're just match cutting right in the middle of that whip when things look the same, like that's still a match cut. It's not like an artsy match cut. It's like not a visit, it's a hidden match cut. But sometimes hidden cuts are hidden by making the match cuts. Sometimes they're hidden by things wiping the frame. And I think it's time for us to look at the masterclass of match cuts and hidden cuts. Kingsman is a great movie. Super stylized, Matthew Vaughn tearing it up. Oh man, Ooh. look at that high shutter speed style. Everything's just super mm. jittery. <laughs> Yeah, the CG doesn't look so great there, but you know what? Who cares? Yep. <laughs> He's gonna dislocate his shoulder. Oh, 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 oh yes! Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, that's incredible. How is that the most visceral moment of this entire scene? People I, are getting their heads dude, blown up, and that woman just got her neck chopped, but somehow a dude crumpling up <laughs> like that? Against the wall. Oh, dummy shots are so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like his real head. It's, track it's a realistic looking head dummy. All right, I think we should go back to the beginning of the scene. Just take a moment and show you where a bunch of the hidden cuts are, and then talk about how they did them. All right, right there. Cut. Oh. Right cut, there for cut. sure. Cut, right there. Cut. Boom. Cut. 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 I think the reason why there are so many hidden cuts in this scene is because this is an incredibly complex choreography. It's like, yeah. a, it's like in a video game. You can't beat the whole level without save points. I bet a lot of these different stunts require very specific setups that you can't do with the camera going through the entire scene. And what they're doing here, like our eyes are super sensitive to motion to the point where we don't really read details in them. So that guy wiping the frame, that as he wipes the frame, they're rotoscoping the edge of him. So everything that gets revealed as he wipes is from the next shot. It's one thing to have hidden cuts. It's another thing to have the intricacy of this puzzle of a fight scene where you're doing all these tricks and taking advantage of those hidden cuts. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that Lieutenant Dan? Forrest Gump is actually a treasure trove of amazing visual effects shots. There's something very special about this shot. There it is. Oh, hold up, hold up. The actor has legs, by the way. So there's one very, very small thing that they did here that helps sell that he's missing legs. Clint, did you see it? Yeah, so if the actor has his legs, which I assume he does, then how does he swipe his legs past the coffee table? Yeah, exactly. Yes. So here's what I think they did. 
that table wasn't there when they filmed Gary Sinise. And they added that table back in, because notice he never actually interacts with the table. He walks behind the table, the other guy walks in front of the table, the other guy being Tom Hanks. And if you look really closely, you can totally see the mask fringing on the table. Oh yeah, dude, we were right. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. So they had to recreate the stumps, yeah. essentially, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just all in all, excellent, excellent CG work. But this little touch is like, oh, let's have him swing his legs to where there's a table. That just brings the world together and really like drives home the fact that like this character does not have legs. You all right? So this one, have you guys seen this movie before? Wait, is this the, is this Spider-Man Spider -Man? 1932? <laughs> Pleasantville. Pleasantville, that's it! <laughs> the general premise of this movie is that Peter Parker here <laughs> has gone back in time. He's gone back to like an idyllic Leave it to Beaver style TV show. And he's, he's basically broadening everybody's horizons. He's introducing them to modern America. She's embarrassed that she's becoming colorized because she's becoming modernized. She's becoming a, a modern woman, but she doesn't want her husband to see her that way. So she needs to have her face painted back to black and white. So is it like, what, what, is he like putting on like green screen makeup and they're just coloring it to be silver? You got it. So all they're doing is pulling oh. a green screen key on it and desaturating it. And that's all they're doing. But Dude, when it's like desaturated. A, you could do this in DaVinci Resolve. Yep. I don't know how they did this. The world is black and white. How do they get yellow light to shine on the characters and things in the world? Well, they're not so. filming in black and white. I haven't seen any yellow light yet. All right, so the yellow light on the fence there, you see that? The oh, yellow light yeah, on the black, yeah, okay. the black and white tree has yellow light on it. Wait. Yeah, it's because okay. they're, not, they're not filming in Dude, black and white. yellow right. reflections on that truck? All right, is this the result of a clever magic trick? Or How many times do I have to say it? <laughs> they're not filming in black and white. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> but it's not in black and white. They're color correcting it so it is in black and white, and then they reveal it so that it looks like it. But that doesn't make sense, Clint. What do you know? Of course it makes sense. It's perfect sense. You mask it. You just track your mask. I mean, I, I agree with Clint on this. That makes sense to me. You can just do a Luma key on every, anything that's like bright in the shot and then <sighs> specifically mask out the spots that you need that are going to be yellow. But I guess that fire truck can't be red. That flag can't be red, white, and blue. That house has to be painted white already. Because if you're going to let the color through, the stuff that would have a color needs to be black and white for that colored light to be on it. If you guys have any guesses as to how they did the yellow light shining on a black and white world here, leave some comments below. If you happen to work on this movie, I feel like this shoot us an email. Hard. Guys, <laughs> it's just masks. They're just tracked masks. How are you really? tracking? If a, if a guy has orange skin and I shine a yellow it. light on you. You tint it. All right, I, I want to show you guys a historical VFX shot. Show me one. This isn't computer graphics. And the question is, is this special effects or visual effects? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Okay, the wig I get, but there's like no cut. There's no transition on her face evolving and transforming. How do you think they did it? it, it okay, I know the answer. It's, it's obviously answer. some sort of optical effect here. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's, she's painted, right? Yes. It's a, it's a transition revealing. So how would you hide paint? So I'll give you a hint. This is an effect that's oh, only possible in minute. black and white. Is there some sort of like lens filter? that can't see a certain shade of makeup? Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. what's going, how would they, okay, how would you do that though? How would they change the it's optical filter? Quite, it's quite simple actually. It's just a red and blue filter. Just like when you have like 3D glasses and you wear like, and the red side doesn't let you see the red lines and the blue side doesn't let you see the blue lines. So you have a red filter in front of the camera and it's uh, filtering out any red on her. So you have like all these red marks on her face, but you can't see any of that because the red filter is cutting all of it out. You transition it to a blue filter and suddenly all those red splotches become bright and you can see all the luminance different. Right, let's go to black and white. Now let's just show only the blue channel because color is made up of red, green, and blue channels. So we show only the blue channel. This should look relatively dark. And this should look relatively bright. Now if we flip it over and we go only to the red channel, this should look pretty dark and this should look bright. When you go specifically to certain color channels, you get different luminance values and that's basically what they're doing with their face. The greatest thing about old movies like this is that they're still doing these crazy, for all intents and purposes, visual effects, but they don't have the same sort of tools that we have today. And they have to be really, really creative with how they go about achieving these visual results. Oh, oh my God, is it finally happening? Are we finally reviewing the worst no, we visual can't do effect? This. We can't do this here. You think we're gonna cover the scene? Get out of here. Really? We're gonna come back. Oh, we'll, hit, we'll hit one of the worst effect shots of all time. Not I don't think video. we should ever review this shot. You know what I think we should do? I think we should try to fix this shot. 
If you guys want to see us do that video, please subscribe. And that's it. Thank you so much for chilling on the couch with us as we learn some new things about visual effects. That was a blast, guys. I'm just doing my best <laughs> Ren impression right now. Thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, please subscribe to the channel. If you have a video or a movie or a clip that you would like us to react to, hit subscribe. Leave a comment. We read them all. It's a blast. Wow. What? <laughs> Dude, am I surrounded by two wrens? <laughs> <laughs>